Hi guys, today we're looking at a game that's very close to my heart from a series of games that I love from LucasArts and that is the X-Wing series which you can see behind me here and particularly the 1994 sequel to X-Wing, TIE Fighter. And TIE Fighter is a really special game because it's the first game ever to let you play as the Empire so you're fighting from the perspective of the Imperials and it was the first game to do that but it's still the only game ever made that is only from that perspective. So all subsequent games either gave you a choice of whether to play as the Rebels or the Imperials, or they had missions doing both. So some missions you were the Rebels and some with you were the Imperials. But TIE Fighter is still the only game to be 100% played as the Empire. So that was really, really cool for the time. But um, what we're going to look at today, it's not a review of the game, it is actually a look at the story and the way that the creators of TIE Fighter brought in a lot of stuff from the Star Wars Extended Universe, but also added to it. So they added a lot of stuff to the Extended Universe and stuff that still pro uh, pops up in the Star Wars franchise on the screen today. And uh, yeah, Obviously there's going to be spoilers for the game TIE Fighter and there will also be spoilers for The Mandalorian, so be warned. So here we go. The game starts with the signature opening crawl and this explains that the Rebels destroyed the Death Star at the Battle of Yavin and Vader responded by attacking the Rebel base on Hoth. Now the Empire is beginning its campaign to eradicate the remaining Rebel forces throughout the galaxy. It's worth noting that the opening crawl here doesn't play the Star Wars theme but plays a modified heroic version of the Imperial March and this is a recurring theme throughout that they slightly change the Imperial music to fit your perspective. So this is set just after the Battle of Hoth in Empire Strikes Back, which is about 3 ABY. So in Star Wars, the timeline is always represented as ABY and BBY. So uh, at the end of Star Wars A New Hope, the first film, that's the Battle of Yavin, they destroy the Death Star. So that's pretty much zero. So anything before that is BBY, before the Battle of Yavin, and anything after is ABY, after the Battle of Yavin. So the end of Star Wars A New Hope is kind of the you know the the birth of Christ in the Star Wars universe as, as far as the calendar goes um, so yeah Empire Strikes Back would be roughly 3 ABY and Return of the Jedi would be 4 ABY um, and yeah we're primarily going to be looking at the cutscenes the game has like seven tours of duty plus more in the expansions and each tour of duty has like four to six missions but we're really concerned with how the cutscenes progress the story the central theme of the game is the development of new TIE Fighter technology and the promotion of Thrawn from Vice Admiral to Grand Admiral. This is the first time Thrawn has appeared on the screen as it were. He was created for Timothy Zahn's Thrawn trilogy of books which ran from 91 to 93, the first of which was Heir to the Empire, so that trilogy is also known as the Heir to the Empire trilogy. Heir to the Empire is set around the same time as The Mandalorian, about 9 ABY, five years after Return of the Jedi. Thrawn has since been seen and mentioned in a lot of Star Wars media, he's been central to many books, he's featured in comics and games, and was recently name dropped in The Mandalorian, which just about gave me a heart attack. Where is your master? Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? Thrawn also appears in Star Wars Rebels, which is set between 5 BBY and 0 BBY. Interestingly, in Rebels he's already a Grand Admiral as indicated by his uniform. This white uniform is reserved exclusively for the 12 Imperial Grand Admirals. In TIE Fighter there are two discrepancies relating to this. Firstly, the TIE Fighter story follows Thrawn's progression from Vice Admiral to Grand Admiral, which was retconned by Rebels as it takes place six years after the events of TIE Fighter. Secondly, if Thrawn is merely a Vice Admiral throughout most of TIE Fighter, then why is he already wearing the Grand Admiral uniform? This is most likely just an oversight by the developers. 
Either way, we know that Thrawn has been around from as early as Rebels, with Season 3 being roughly 3 BBY, and as late as Heir to the Empire and Mando, so as late as 9 ABY. So we can deduce that Thrawn has been active in the Star Wars universe for at least 12 to 14 years. Thrawn was created as another big bad as it were, another bad guy of the Empire, but rather than having powers like the Sith, he's a master tactician. TIE Fighter's story was written by David Westman, who was also mission designer. He wrote for the entire X-Wing series. I just want to point out what a revelation the music is in this game. I know I've already touched on that with the, them reworking the Imperial themes, but the music is absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and just the way that they change the Imperial music because you're playing from the perspective of the Empire is really, really clever. For example, when you're presented medals after each tour of duty, it plays the heroic version of the Imperial March. It's a really nice touch and it adds to that strange feeling of being on the Empire's side. The music was done by Klimt Bajakian, Michael Land and Peter McConnell. They'd all worked together on many famous LucasArts soundtracks, including the Monkey Island series, Day of the Tentacle, Sam and Max, numerous Star Wars games, and of course since they've all done countless other video game soundtracks. TIE Fighter uses the iMuse system introduced in Monkey Island 2, allowing for the seamless transition between different tracks. So we're looking at the CD-ROM version, which is the talky version of TIE Fighter, and there are some really interesting voice actors in here. The briefing officer who briefs you before each mission is voiced by Guy Siner. Any Brits around my age watching will remember him as Lieutenant Gruber from A Lower Low. Scott Lawrence, who's been in a ton of TV shows, does the voice of Vader. He also voiced Vader in other Star Wars games, including the recent Fallen Order and Squadrons. Nick Jameson does various voices throughout, including that of Emperor Palpatine and Admiral Harkov. He's an actor who's been in a lot of TV and film, including 24 and Lost. He's also a really versatile voice actor, having done countless voices in TV and video games. He's done far too much to list, but notable voices are various voices in Sam and Max Hit the Road, including Max, some of the Edisons and other characters in Day of the Tentacle, plus voices in Full Throttle and loads of other Star Wars games, including voicing the protagonist Carl Katarn in Dark Forces. So he's a Lucasfilm Games veteran. And Denny Delk does various voices throughout TIE Fighter, including Admiral Zarin. He's another Lucasfilm veteran, having voiced characters in Fate of Atlantis, Day of the Tentacle, the Monkey Island series, and various Star Wars games. He was notably the voices of Hoagie and Purple Tentacle, and Murray in Curse of Monkey Island. So there's some really top quality voice acting in the talkie version. Star Wars TIE Fighter not only let you play as the Empire, but it went more in depth into the characters and their motivations than most other Star Wars games. Let's run the opening cutscene. Just pausing here to note that this is the first on-screen depiction of Coruscant ever. The Star Wars wiki states that Coruscant was first shown in the 97 special edition of Return of the Jedi, but TIE Fighter predates that by three years. The actual name Coruscant was first mentioned in Heir to the Empire in 91, which we've already established is partly the inspiration for this story. The wiki states that it was first mentioned out loud in The Phantom Menace, but no, again, it was TIE Fighter. Yes, those were the first of those in the films, but TIE Fighter beat them both to it. The Empire is on the verge of success. Soon, peace and order will be restored throughout the galaxy. Even now, our capable forces, led by Darth Vader, are striking back at the rebel insurgents. 
The rebels are unprepared for our attack. Signal Vice Admiral Thrawn to launch his TIE squadrons immediately. This rebel stronghold has no hope of escape. Commence the attack. Yes, sir. Straight away we're introduced to Vice Admiral Thrawn, bizarrely in his Grand Admiral uniform. TIE Fighter introduces so many new ships and these XQ platforms, but more on that later. I love that you get these little cutscenes throughout the game showing the TIEs deploying. Periodically you're tattooed by the secret order of the Empire, they zap you with force lightning and your tattoo gradually expands over the course of the game. The Secret Order, also known as the Prophets of the Dark Side, were not new to Star Wars with TIE Fighter, they'd been in several books by then. They're an ancient order that used the power of the Dark Side to prophesize the possible outcomes of future events. I just love that TIE Fighter is drawing from the extended universe so much, something that makes shows like The Mandalorian so cool. So one of the admirals, Admiral Harkov, is defecting, and he has this little meet with the rebellion including Mon Mothma. Harkov was created especially for the game, his only other appearance was in a Battlegrounds expansion in 2002. I have come with an offer for the rebellion. We have little reason to trust you, Admiral Harkov, but we are willing to hear your offer. The fleet under my command is willing to join the Rebel Alliance. For a price. Very interesting, Admiral. We have great need for officers of your caliber. Here is what I propose. Civil war that has ravaged your planets is over. It is time to lay down your arms. Join us to rebuild all that was destroyed in this savage conflict. Even now, the process of repairing your planets has begun. Proceeding. The damage caused by the rebel attack is almost repaired. Excellent. I want this installation fully operational within the hour. Yes, sir. We will be prepared for any further rebel attack. Thrawn clearly doesn't mess about, does he? Welcome, Lord Vader. Let us show you the improvements we've made to the TIE Advanced. Here we're introduced to another Imperial Admiral, Zarin. Zarin is unique to the X-Wing series, having appeared in this game's precursor, X-Wing, and the later X-Wing Alliance. No other appearances, although he was mentioned in Timothy Zahn's 2011 novel, Choices of One. Zarin is head of TIE Fighter development, and here he's showing Vader the new TIE Advanced and its capabilities. The TIE Advanced is like Vader's prototype TIE Fighter, but has extra capabilities like hyperspace and a deflector shield. I guess this was to make the game more interesting than just piloting a vanilla TIE Fighter. 
The TIE Advanced was another ship that was designed especially for this game. The Emperor is very interested in your progress, Admiral Zarin. Hyperspace capability. Impressive. The first TIE Advanced are now seeing combat. We also have prototypes of the next generation of TIE Fighters. Interesting. The Emperor will want to prototype immediately. Vader meets with the Emperor to discuss Harkov's treachery. Looks like he's bang in trouble. Yes, Lord Vader. My master, I have tracked Admiral Harkov to a rebel space installation. I want Admiral Harkov captured alive. We must apprehend all the traitors under his command. I will see to it personally. Do not fail me, Vader. Harkov's fleet must not escape. Harkov is soon captured and meets a sticky end at the hands of Vader, complete with a hilarious death scream. Welcome, Admiral Harkov. We have a matter to discuss. What is the location of your fleet? <coughs> now you shall pay for your treachery. Vader and the Emperor meet again to discuss Zarin's new TIE Fighter. We have finished our analysis of Admiral Zarin's new TIE Fighter. It outperforms the new TIE Advanced. The ship they're referring to here is the TIE Defender, and this is another ship that was designed for and introduced in TIE Fighter. Excellent. The Admiral is fortunate it did not fall into rebel hands. Why was security so careless? Admiral Zarin suspects a rebel spy has infiltrated his research facility. He is investigating the matter. He reports that the rebels have a new weapon technology. Keep me informed. The rebels must not gain any advantage. Zarin has also developed a beam weapon that disrupts the firing controls of its target vessel. Zarin is loading this weapon onto his fleet of TIE fighters. Is the beam weapon completed? Yes, Admiral Zarin. We are ready to deploy the weapon. Excellent. Begin arming my fighter squadrons at once. Yes, sir. to capturing Admiral Harkov's fleet. Excellent, Lord Vader. Harkov's fleet must not fall in rebel hands. Be on guard. The secret order has alerted me of danger. I will keep you informed of my progress. Rely on the members of the Secret Order to carry out your mission. They have proved most valuable. Looks like Zarin has let the power and technology go to his head and decides to start a coup to overthrow the Emperor. Report on our recent attacks. Admiral Zarin, we have destroyed all the Sedar fleet systems factories located in the Omar system. Excellent. The Empire has lost most of its capability to manufacture the TIE Advanced Starfighters. We will continue our destruction of the Emperor's military industrial centers. Soon he will have nothing but his pitiful force to rely on. Commander Ravine, order our forces to the Outer Rim. From there we will launch new attacks against the Emperor. Yes sir, Admiral Zarin. <coughs> 
Thrawn captures one of Zarin's TIE defenders in order to study it and discovers a weakness. are on board, but Zarin's research facility has been destroyed. Prepare to leave for Coruscant. The Emperor has ordered that these TIE defenders be transported there immediately. I have studied Zarin's ways and have discovered a weakness in his reliance on technology. When our newest starfighter is completed, our forces will strip Zarin of his technological advantage. For the first time, we see Thrawn meeting with Palpatine. He's modified the assault gunboat to create a new ship called the Missile Boat to take on Zarin's fleet. Admiral Thrawn, have you devised a strategy to defeat Zarin's TIE defenders? The assault gunboat has been improved to create a new, more powerful ship named the Missile Boat. Zarin will fall before these new starfighters. You will be rewarded when, if, you can destroy Zarin and his traitorous forces. Make sure that Zarin does not interfere with our plans to crush the rebellion. And Thrawn is promoted to Grand Admiral. Admiral Thrawn, I am promoting you to Grand Admiral for your obedient service to the Empire. You will join my inner circle of 12 Grand Admirals who will command all Imperial forces for the glory of the Empire. Emperor, your faith in me is well placed. How may I serve you next? You must track down Zarin and destroy his forces once and for all. Grand Admiral Thrawn, do not fail me. The traitor Zarin cannot run forever. Soon, he will be in our grasp. We are ready to start the demonstration. Proceed! A Corellian Corvette has been modified to house an experimental cloaking device. This test will confirm our ability to cloak a small starship or freighter with a much lower power consumption than ever before. Ultimately, we hope to adapt this mechanism for use on an Imperial Starfighter. Here Thrawn is overseeing the development of a new low-powered cloaking device, but the scientists have encountered a serious flaw. If used in conjunction with the ship's hyperdrive, it causes catastrophic instability. How close are you to perfecting this device? Unfortunately, some technical problems remain. There is a mysterious and possibly catastrophic instability that is caused by using this device in conjunction with hyperdrive engines. Hmm. Interesting. Keep me informed on your progress. I may have a use for this device very soon. This bit is obviously shortly before the Battle of Endor as Vader and the Emperor discuss the fact that the new Death Star is operational. All is prepared at Endor for the upcoming battle. I have ensured that the Rebels are unaware of the true operational status of the new Death Star. Even now, the Rebels are gathering their forces at Sullust for the strike on Endor. Little do they know of the fate that awaits them. Excellent. It is time for me to travel to Endor to oversee the final destruction of their pitiful rebellion. All is as I have foreseen. Victory will be ours. Here at Endor, all preparations are ready for the rebel attack. Soon, they will realize the full futility of resisting my will. Grand Admiral Thrawn, you must bring your hunt for the renegade Zarin to its final conclusion. Do not fail me now. Yes, Emperor Palpatine. I have studied Zarin's ways closely. He will not resist the bait that I have laid out for him. Soon he too will meet his end. 
Excellent. Once Zared and the rebels are destroyed, our victory will be complete. So it seems that Thrawn has laid a trap for Zarin and he's confident that he'll fall for it. I'm sure you can guess what's coming. This is Admiral Zarin. You must activate the cloaking device at once. Admiral Zarin, the device is very unstable. I don't know the consequences of using it in hyperspace. Oh no, Zarin's going to use the unstable cloaking device with the hyperdrive. Ready for another hilarious death screen? No choice. Start the initiation procedures immediately. Yes, sir. <laughs> Once again, we have evaded Thrawn's grasp. I knew I would be able to beat that. is the fate of enemies of the Empire. So that's the end of the cutscenes. So TIE Fighter introduced a ton of ships in addition to the ones we've already seen, including the T-Wing and the R-41 Star Chaser. So that was a little look at TIE Fighter's influence on the Star Wars Extended Universe. So it furthered Thrawn's backstory, it introduced a ton of ships, and I just love how for the story of TIE Fighter, they drew on so much of the Star Wars Extended Universe rather than relying on what had just appeared in the films. It's this same quality that makes The Mandalorian such a pleasure to watch and I cannot wait for a live action Thrawn to appear in The Mandalorian. Thanks for watching and may the Force be with you.